And I pray that every one of us will be there. I didn't hear you. Yeah. I will be richly blessed in Jesus' name. Yeah. And so tonight we're having a message related to our hope, which is uh, feasting after the fasting. Your period of fasting getting over. Yeah. Hope arising for you. Yeah. Hope arising for your family. Hope arising for the church. You will see what you have never seen. Hear what you have never heard. And the touch of the Lord will be mighty in every life in Jesus' name. In my own life. I said in my own life. The touch of the Lord will be mighty in Jesus' name. The Lord will bless you. And then we invite newcomers, we invite new people. And the publicity that started, um, you know, long ago, but then came to a climax on Sunday. Were you there on Sunday? Ah, uh, look at him, it's not, he wasn't there. How many of you were there? Wonderful. I knew you would be there. And all your efforts, the Lord will bless in Jesus' name. Let's still keep on following up. Let's keep, keep on saying the same thing, telling the people, and making arrangements for them when we get to the retreat ground. It's going to be a wonderful time. As people are entering the retreat ground, everywhere, not only Lagos here, power will come upon their lives. Are you, were you here during the retreat of power as a fold? Uh, there are a lot of new new leaders there how many of you are here power of, as of old is coming again yeah. i said it's coming again yeah. it will come upon our lives in our own time in jesus name yeah. let's pray together father we thank you tonight and bless your name we thank you because of the glorious things we are going to do we're expecting lord that this retreat will not just be a usual, normal, run-of-the-mill retreat in Jesus' name. Visit your people. Touch our lives. Do great things in the life of everyone, even at this retreat in Jesus' name. As of old, when people got really saved, as of old, when we can refer to retreats and were sanctified. As of old, when we're baptized in the Holy Ghost. As of old, when great, great miracles, unforgettable miracles happened. Lord, we're praying this will be another time of refreshing in Jesus' name. Showers. Showers. Showers of blessing upon all your people in every place the retreat will be held in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray that's good but say another one before you sit down in first corinthians chapter 3 first corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 6 i have planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Here Paul the apostle said, I planted, Apollos also watered, but then ultimately it is God that gives the increase, that gives the fruit, that gives the multiplication, and gives the profit, and gives the progress, as well as the growth. Look at verse 7. So then, neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. It says, whoever we are, God is going to use us. He will use you. He will use me. He will use Paul, Apollos, and all of us together in Jesus' name. But he says, we shouldn't think too much about ourselves, too much about me, or too much about you, but about God that giveth the increase. Now, verse 8. He that planteth, and he that watereth, are one. 
that is he that planteth and he that watereth there must be unity there must be fellowship there must be love there must be togetherness there must be connection between us that is one is preaching the other one is watering the other one is interceding the other one is ministering any other way all of us who minister to the people of God whether you minister from the pulpit or you're ministering from the congregation it says there must be unity because we're working together with God he that planted and he that watereth are one are united we we synchronize everything that we're doing so that there's no division there's no contradiction and there is no opposition we're all working together and it says every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor you will not serve in vain for we are laborers together with god it says we it's not just talking about paul yes paul not just about Apollos, yes, Apollos. It says we and the rest of the workers and the rest of the leaders. It says we're workers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Look at verse 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and know the builders thereupon. You know what Paul the Apostle is emphasizing here? By the Spirit of God, it says, it is not an isolated ministry. A solitary ministry. An individual that is just running and doing everything all alone. It says, no, we're working together. I laid the foundation and know the builders thereupon. It says, it's ministry as a foundation builder very important and then the ministry of other people building upon that it says that is very important too and we cannot separate one from the other let him finish his own i'll come for my own his own is more important than mine or mine is more important than his there's no superiority and there's no inferiority and it says i've laid the foundation and no other builder thereon but let every man let every man take care. Let every man make sure that he's doing the very best. Let every person have that commitment. Let every person have that faithfulness. Let every person have that yieldedness and that loyalty that here I am, I am planting. Here I am, I am building. Here I am, I am doing what God has given me to do. And with all my heart, and with all my soul, and with all my mind, with faithfulness, and with dedication, and with sacrifice, and with total commitment. And the other person too, he says, I am there, I'm an Apollos, I am there, I'm another person, and I am not Paul. I am not Silas, I am not Timothy, I stay in my place, I'm going to build on, and I'm going to add something of value, I'm going to add something profitable to what the others have done, so that as we all build together, as we all come together, the work that comes out of that will be something that will bring glory unto the Lord. That's what the apostle is saying. He says, it's according to the grace of God. The one planting must have the grace of God. The one adding their water must have the grace of God. The one that is starting must have the grace of God. The one that comes after must have the grace of God. The same grace. And we cannot say, his own is very important. His own is very high, so he needs a greater grace. No, everybody needs the grace of God. And the grace is available for everyone. He will grant us the grace. In unity, we're going to have the grace. 
in fellowship we're going to have the grace in love we're going to have the grace in commitment and consecration we're going to have the grace the same grace available for everyone grace available for paul that same grace available for you so that we can all build together and every man every man will take heed how he builds thereupon for all the foundation verse 11 can no man lay and that is laid which is jesus christ now if any man builds thereupon they are upon this foundation gold silver precious tools wood he or stubble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire it says the testing time is coming when God will test the motive of our service, when He will test the purpose of our service, when He will test the commitment of our service, when He will test everything that we do, whether it is according to His plan, according to His purpose, according to what is written in the Word, according to His perfect will. He says, the fire, that's the fire of examination the fire of testing will test every man's work and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is look at verse 14 if any man's work abides which he has built thereupon when the fire of testing and the fire of examination when it tests the work we have done the work we're doing every time and in particular now as we are going to this retreat the publicity and the prayer and the preparation of the place we're going to use and everything we put in place as we're going to have this retreat which is going to be the first of its kind I said it's going to be the force of his kind and then you understand that and you contribute your quota and you go beyond your quota and you go beyond what is required and you contribute even more your work will abide in Jesus name the fruit will abide in Jesus name it says he shall receive a reward how many are working to receive a reward I said how many are working to receive a reward? You will not miss your reward in Jesus' name. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burnt, look at that. You know, this is something you understand about the inspired writers of the, of the word of God. They are not one-sided. They tell us this side. They tell us the other side. They tell us there are people, their work will abide. There, there are people, their fruits will abide. There are people that when you consider their loyalty and you consider their faithfulness and you consider their consecration from the depth of their heart, transparently they are offering you know, unto the Lord. And it says their work, their fruits will abide. Then it says, but don't forget, there is the other side. Don't forget, there is the other side of the work. Their work being burnt my work will not be burnt i said my work will not be burnt it says if any man's work shall be burnt it shall suffer loss think about everything collapsing that somebody does when there is no chance to repair when there is no chance to correct anything when there is no chance to reconstitute and reconstruct but he himself shall be saved so as by fire. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man, this is another category now, number one, those that build with faith, with faithfulness, with love, with loyalty, with consecration, with commitment, with transparency. Their work will abide. Others, number two, they live the Christian life. In their own personal lives, they are all right. In their own personal lives, they live straight. They live with that holiness without which no man shall save the Lord. Only that their work is not abiding the test of fire. And because of that, everything they build with wood, with hay, with stubble, 
the testing time will come and the fire will burn it, will burn it down but because they still live in righteousness they will get to heaven but no reward everything is gone but now there's a third category verse 16 know ye not that ye are the temple of god and that the spirit of god dwelleth in you if any man defile the temple of god it's a third category he, he defiles himself defiles herself as the temple of god he defiles the church of the living god instead of building together while we're all building with uh, faithfulness and with loyalty and with transparency and we're building with all our energy with both hands he is using his own hand and his own gift and his own ability to tear down and to defile and to destroy and it says for such people if any man any man whatever his title is a pastor is a prophet or he calls himself apostle or he calls himself a leader if any man defiled the temple of god him shall somebody there tell me ah uh, you don't want to read the bible tell me him shall god destroy for the temple of god is holy which temple ye are you'll keep your own temple holy and you'll keep the temple of god the church of the living god holy in jesus name tonight i'm talking to you on gathering with christ gathering with christ gathering with christ that's what we're doing you're praying for the church you're gathering with christ you're preaching in the church you're gathering with christ you're publicizing this coming retreat you're gathering with christ you're encouraging other people come along come along something great is happening you must be part of this you're encouraging other people you're gathering with god gathering with christ and you are motivating other people and you say i don't have means of transportation don't worry about that our district will provide that i don't have means of doing this or doing that uh, don't worry about that there's provision for everyone come on come along and you're going to be blessed as you motivate other people and you mobilize other people and then we'll bring all the resources that are needed so that everyone will have opportunity of being there but when I get there, there's going to be a great crowd. When I get there, there's going to be a kind of a you know, multitude. I bought accommodation. Where will I sleep? Don't worry about that. When we get there, just make sure we're in connection together. I give you my number. You give me your number. And I will make sure you get a convenient place to stay. You see, when you do that, motivating other people, mobilizing all the people so we can be there, we're gathering together with Christ. That's what we are talking about now. Gathering with Christ. We're looking at John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I'm reading from verse 16. John chapter 10. Reading from verse 16. Another sheep I have which are not of this fold. You see, there are many people. They think, you know, the church is large enough already. Our membership is large enough already. But you must understand jesus died for everyone he shared his blood for everyone he suffered and tasted death for every man and the people outside there there are people that have not tasted of the salvation of the lord and jesus said all the sheep i have which are not of this fold them also tell me them also say it aloud them also say it with confidence say it as if you are going to help jesus do it i must bring it says there's no two ways about it i must bring them because they are outside i died for them i shed my blood for them and them i must bring then he goes on to say and they shall hear my voice you are bringing them on behalf of christ you are bringing them on behalf of the Lord, the head of the church, you are bringing them. He says, he wants them there. 
this is a period when people are filled with festivities they want to go to their village they want to do this they want to do that it says there's a compulsory thing to do and there is an important place to be and it is at that retreat and it says them i must bring and it says they will hear my voice and there shall be one fold and one shepherd one fold and one shepherd three things we're looking at number one the faithful gathering of sheep for the king he is the king he is the savior he is the sanctifier he is the shepherd he is the lamb that shed his blood and paid for the transformation justification salvation conversion of the whole world and he is the one we are gathering the sheep unto the faithful gathering of sheep for the king point number two the fatal scattering of souls from the kingdom the fatal deadly terrible painful scattering of souls from the kingdom there are people already in the kingdom they're born again the children of God and the Lord wants you to be a help he wants you to show some love he wants you to show some understanding and when they're discouraged encourage them when it appears they're going through some deep waters help them so that they can remain in the kingdom but there are those who scatter there are those who drive souls away from the kingdom and that is fatal and that is deadly and that is terrible painful to the king and painful to the lord the fatal scattering of souls from the kingdom point number three the final gathering of saints to the king of kings is coming back again i said the lord is coming back again and is going to gather from the west and the east and the north and the south is going to gather us to the heavenly kingdom is the king of kings and we're going to be gathered unto him that the future gathering that the final gathering of saints to the king of kings and i pray you'll be a part of this in jesus name i said you'll be part of it in jesus name I'm looking at uh, point number one, the faithful gathering of sheep for the king. We're gathering for him. We're gathering on his behalf. And we're bringing souls to him, to him as savior, to him who died for our sins, and to him who gave his life so that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We're coming to John chapter 4 john chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 34 john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus says unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work and if we're christians and we're followers of christ we need to be like christ it's something to get started but it's something to continue until we finish and thank god we have started the work of the lord we will continue till the very end in jesus name you will not be tired you will not be weak and you will not stop halfway journey halfway of a journey in jesus name he said this is my meat. He said, this is my desire. He said, these are the things that really interest me. He says, these are the things I'm living for. And these are the things I want to offer to the Lord every time that I'm walking, I'm walking, I'm walking until I finish the work he has given me to do. Now he talks about us. Look at verse 35. Say not ye. There are yet four months, and then comest harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. It says the people are ready. 
have died for them and the spirit of god is calling them the spirit of god is wooing them the spirit of god is inviting them the spirit of god is speaking their hearts already and we are now to go out and we're to walk in collaboration with the spirit of god because the field is white already to harvest and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal that's the purpose of the retreat gathering fruit unto life eternal it is not just for them to come i was there it's good to be there it's not just for them to say i was part of the retreat hope feasting after the fasting i was there i started with them it is so that as they come and they hear the word of god they'll have life eternal they move from death unto life they move from darkness unto light and they will have the real salvation that jesus died for on the cross of calvary it says that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together you see that again there are those who sow there are those who reap and they must unite together and they must work together they must be faithful together and they must assist each other and they must move on hand in hand hatch with hatch together and then he goes on to say in verses 37 and herein is a saying true one sows and another repairs one brings them into the kingdom another does the follow up one is preaching and then they know about christ the savior another one is counseling and they want to stay with the savior i sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor all the men labored and ye are entered into their labor he wants us to bring them in the faithful gathering of the sheep for the king we're coming to uh, matthew chapter 22 matthew chapter 22 and i'm reading from verse 9 matthew chapter 22 verse 9 it says go ye therefore into the highways and as many as ye shall find bid them to the marriage that's the publicity that's inviting them to come that's bringing them to the retreat so the servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found they gathered together all as many as they found the people you find under the bridge the people you find on the street the people you find at the corners of the street somewhere and the people you find in your own house in your own apartment and the people in your community people everywhere you're using all means to call everyone to come both bad and good both bad and good what does that mean in society there's some sinners that are decent sinners there are some sinners that are civilized sinners. There are some sinners that are educated sinners. There are some sinners, they appear good, but they're still sinners. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Others are outright bad, outright evil, outright wicked, occultic, wicked, violent. All of them, bring them in. And it says, and the wedding was furnished with guests the wedding was furnished with guests but you understand it's not just inviting them there there must be the experience of eternal life and the experience of salvation and the experience of turning away from their sin and coming to the lord jesus christ as their lord and savior verse 11 and when the king came in to see the guest he saw there a man that had not on a wedding garment the robe of righteousness a wedding garment and the clothing of salvation the wedding garment and the evidence that they have turned away from their sins and they have washed in the blood of the lamb and now they are in christ he didn't put that on he thought my natural life that's enough my natural goodness that's enough my natural ability that's enough 
my religion that's enough the people who are coming to the retreat that will feel that way i have my own church i have my own religion but i just came here so that i can participate with you we don't don't allow that push them to salvation and preach the word of god unto them and let them know except a man be born again he cannot see and he cannot enter into the kingdom of god verse 12 and it says unto him friend how camest thou in here not having the wedding garment how did you come in here and you're not having the wedding garment and it was speechless then said the king to the servants bind him hands and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth for all of us who are preaching we must make sure we emphasize salvation emphasize conversion emphasize the necessity of having eternal life it's not enough just to be at the retreat there must be genuine and thorough repentance and there must be faith in the lord jesus christ and as they come to the lord jesus christ they become new creatures in christ the real evidence that they know the lord and there is salvation otherwise if they just come like that just like this person was there at the wedding not having the wedding garment eventually if they die like that they're still going to go to hell bind him underfoot and cast him into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth i pray that will not happen to our converts but you know, we need to gather them in, make them to hear the word of God. When the message, when any message is going on, we ourselves should lead the example and be at the place where the message is being preached. And then, if there are those who are roaming about and they're just seeing the campground or whatever, we're help, we're appealing to them, come in, come, come and sit down. They came not to not to have the sight seen, not just to see what is there. They came so that they can hear the word of god they will hear the word of god they will respond to the word of god and they will pray they will pray after hearing the word of god because just hearing and hearing and having head knowledge without prayer without repentance without a definite act of faith that will not be sufficient at all they must have genuine experience of salvation luke chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 21. Luke chapter 14, verse 21. So that that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, because there are people that give excuses, said unto his servants, Go out quickly, go out quickly into the streets and the lanes of the city, and bring in either the poor and the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded. I pray we'll be obedient to the Lord like that. That as he has commanded, publicize, we will do it. Bring in the people, we will do it. Encourage the people to come, we will do it. Make transport arrangement, we will do it. Go to them and knock at their doors in their houses since they promised to come and go and remind them. I pray we'll do it in Jesus' name. It is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And yet there is room. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in. You see that it's not just will you come? Won't it be nice if you came? You've never done something to make me happy. Won't it be nice at this time? Just do this to make me happy. Uh -uh. You compel them to come. Give them reasons why they must be there. Give them the advantage of being there. Give them the blessings they're going to have when they come there. Give them the Lord is waiting for them. And compel them to come in that my house may be filled. That my house may be filled. They will come. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 28. Matthew chapter 11, 
and i'm reading from verse 28 here it says these are the words of the lord jesus christ himself he says come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest come unto me that's what he says and we need to go and tell the people come unto me come to him as a savior Come to him as the light of the world. Come to him as a solution to all the problems of your life. Come unto me, all ye that labor. You have labored, you have tried, you have done this, you have done that, you have gone there, you have gone up and down, and yet no solution. Now solution has come. To the problem of sin, solution has come. To the problem of sickness, solution has come and to the problem of oppression solution has come to the problem of adversity solution has come and to the problem of satanic oppression solution has come come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest understand that rest that's the reason why they are coming they must have that rest it's not just enough to say i brought them follow up on them while you are the rich there i see god the rest now i see god the restoration now i see god the regeneration now i see god the renewal now i see god the revival now i see god the resurrection from the spiritual life of deadness now i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me you tell them the retreat coming to an end is not the end they must keep on learning keep on learning and learn of me and then he goes on to say for i am meek and lowly in heart and you shall find rest unto your souls they will find rest i said they will find rest in their soul in their heart in their spirit they'll find rest in jesus name for my yoke is easy and my body is light my yoke is easy my body is like we're looking at john chapter 12 john chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 20 john chapter 12 we're reading from verse 20 and there were certain greeks among them that came all to worship at the feast there were certain people that came they had been invited and they came they were greeks they didn't have life eternal they didn't have life everlasting they didn't have conversion they didn't have salvation but they came to worship all the same the same came therefore to philip which was of bethsaida of galilee and desired him saying sir we would see jesus that's the purpose of coming to the retreat sir we'll see jesus why because there's no other name by which you can be saved except the name of jesus sir we'll see jesus why because these are the stone that others have set aside but he is the corner the chief cornerstone sir we would see jesus why is the way the only way i'm the way the truth and the life no man comes unto the father except by me sir we would see jesus why because it's the only one that can give us grace grace to live and grace to stand and grace to be who we ought to be that's why they eventually realize we've come we have worshipped but now we need to see jesus let's make sure that the people we're bringing to the retreat every preacher will make the people see jesus the singers will make the people see jesus our orchestra will make the people see tell me jesus and our the people who are leading prayer they make the people see jesus and the people who come to pray who lead us in prayer after we finish the preaching they make us see jesus sir we would see jesus and philip comes and tell us andrew again andrew and philip tell jesus that's it that's it they brought them to jesus and i pray that will be our own devotion commitment in jesus name i'm waiting for another amen look at osea there's something here osea chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 1 osea 
chapter 10 reading from verse 1 Israel is an empty vine he bringeth forth fruit unto himself think about that there are some people they invite people to the retreat but they make the people attached to them not to Christ but it says Israel is an empty vine instead of attracting the people to the God of Israel the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob they bear the fruit unto themselves instead of a disciple leading the people unto Christ they lead them unto themselves that should not be that should not be we're gathering for Christ we're gathering for the Savior. We're gathering for the Redeemer. We're gathering for the one that died for them and for us on the cross of Calvary. It says, Israel is an empty vine. Why is he empty? Even though you're saying, that's my convert. That's right. Your convert. You brought them to yourself. That's my convert. That's right. That's your comfort. That's why their lives are the way they are. They're looking up to you. You're not telling them and showing them how to look up to Jesus. But it says, if we're going to do anything at all, we gather the fruit. We bring the converts and we attach them to the Lord Jesus Christ. Otherwise, we'll be like Israel, an empty vine that bringeth fruit unto himself. Look at verse 2 their heart is divided now shall they be found faulty their heart is divided will i attach them to christ or will i tell them look at me and look unto me and bring them to myself their heart is divided now shall they be found faulty look at verse 3 for now they shall say we have no king because we feared not the Lord. It says, you know, there are people like this, they are just a third there, and all they want to do is to focus attention on themselves and say, you know, I must have this, I must have this, I must have that. And it says, it's like they have no king, they have no leader, and they are not under the leading of any leader because they fear not the Lord. But the Lord is saying things will change at this retreat and amen over there verse 12 so to yourselves in righteousness and reap in mercy break up your fallow ground for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you as we're going for the retreat we need to understand we'll make it a prayer not only of preaching but a, a time of praying a time of breaking up a fallow ground a time of looking back at what our lives have been what our christian lives have been what our christian professions have been and all the work we're doing for the lord bringing fruit unto ourselves and not unto the lord and the and the fear we didn't have of god we come to that retreat and we say i'm going to have the showers of blessing of the righteousness of god and it says so, so to yourself in righteousness you reap in mercy you break up your fire ground because this retreat time is a time to seek the lord until he comes and he raises righteousness upon you give me a good amen there point number two now is the fatal scattering of souls from the kingdom the fatal scattering of souls from the kingdom and let's look at matthew chapter 12 matthew chapter 12 i'm reading from the statue matthew chapter 12 reading from the statue he that is not with me is against me and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad as we're going to that retreat and as we come to the regular worship on sunday regular worship on monday regular worship on thursday regular training on saturday and regular leadership development on tuesday we must make sure that our attitude our conduct 
our disposition is not driving people away from the service the way we do what we do and the things that are done by individuals you need to check your life there's some things that have become like reflex action that take place without even your thinking but then it drives away other people and other people instead of thinking of the word of god they are thinking why is that person acting like that let's say for example we're all praying and as we're praying somebody begins to clap and clap and clap and another person is wondering why is that person clapping now and everybody is busy praying and we're lost in devotion unto the lord another time somebody is leading the prayer and everybody says amen and there's somebody there is sonorous voice that will prolong the amen that you will know and even identify the place he's sitting and other people are wondering why is that fellow uh, becoming like a rascal in the house of God and why are they doing like that at other times you know it is who are praying and somebody is waving their hand that's enough that's enough that's enough and the person is leading the prayer who should be led by the spirit of God is diverted to that person what's that person saying is that person wanting to be in control so that the Holy Ghost is not in control anymore. It says in Bastachi, he that is not with me, he that is not with Christ, is against Christ. And he that is not with the servant of God, as he's giving the word, as he's preaching the word, if he's showing any sign of opposition, any sign of rebellion, any sign of disobedience to everything we have been saying, so that the service can be solemn. That one is not with the people of God, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. There's the danger of scattering souls away from the kingdom of God. And if you're a preacher, and uh, you know you come to preach and you know what you are saying you know what you ought to say and you're giving up the word of god you might see some people that no matter what we preach and no matter what we say they will still do that extraneous thing uh, they're used to doing just overlook them and keep on the straight line of the word of god and keep on preaching the word without fear and without favor if you mentioned holiness you mention sanctification and then somebody who hates sanctification holiness and then you react say it again and emphasize this is the way to see the lord for the peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the lord let no preacher be shut up by any distracting action by any distracting voice or dissenting voice let's make sure that you are gathering with christ and if anybody wants to sway you not to gather with christ you will stand your ground am i talking to god's people in that way you manifest courage you manifest conviction and you manifest steadfastness and you make the people know that even if you are going to die for what you are doing there's something to die for you are honestly contending for the faith once delivered unto the saints and god will help you in jesus name we're looking at jeremiah chapter 23 jeremiah chapter 23 and i'm reading from verse 2 it says therefore thus says the lord god of israel against the pastors that feed my people look at that god almighty against the pastors that feed my people ye have scattered my flock ye have scattered my flock that's not what you are called to do you came in as a preacher as a pastor as a leader and you ought to gather with christ and gather for christ but it says you have scattered my flock and driven away and have not visited them behold i will visit upon you the evil of your doings says the lord look up here many years ago before deeper life started i you know was witnessing i want to be teaching in a school and in that school where i was teaching i was talking to somebody 
and I was talking to him because he came from a particular place where they swap wives. That is, this person will say, This is my wife, you can have my wife, and the other one will say, You can, you know, the community like that, and they take all the women community like community like that. And I knew him, I knew that's the way he came from. I was witnessing to him and telling him how he will come to know the Lord. And then I have another student. This uh, particular student was just standing by, and I wasn't talking to him. The one I was talking to he didn't accept but the one i wasn't talking to he had everything i said and he went we have some woods in the in our school at that time he went to that place and he prayed and he repented and everything totally changed for that student anytime i was teaching the mathematics and uh, you know i got to him there was a kind of odor coming out and uh, you know it was irritating and i'll make fun of him and say oh why are you like this right boy and uh, you know this kind of uh, smell is coming out of you he didn't say anything you know but he had venereal disease at that age it was in form four at that time and uh, so he was not the one i was talking to and he went into the woods and he prayed he got saved and without anybody praying for him he got healed he came to the class uh, you know the following time uh, i passed by i couldn't perceive the odor anymore so Something has changed. Real conversion, real life. And then he, he came near me and then he told me what had happened. I told him about sanctification. He got sanctified and then he bowed uh, the Holy Ghost baptism, baptized in the Holy Ghost. He had a shining, a shining experience. And he was living far away from the uh, church. We were going at that time. He will walk. He didn't have any money. He will walk for hours and go to the church he'll be the first person to get to the church but eventually something happened that he got discouraged i wasn't living in lagos then but he was in lagos and he backslid he went off like that and then some of us got to know and then i, I spoke to him and said how i can almost mention his name now i still remember the name how could you do this how could you do this and he broke down and said he was coming back again and then he came to the church the first time he got to the church here is my point now uh, one of our sunday school teachers who later became uh, you know the overseer of that church when the first overseer passed away he just uh, saw him and he said run away prodigal what have you come to do again okay welcome he felt so ashamed run away prodigal you have come what have you come to do again from that day he never stepped back into church anymore that pastor drove him away with just one sentence there are people like that that people want to come back and when they come back they think that will stretch our hands around them and embrace them like the father of the prodigal son but we don't do that we say run away prodigal run away prodigal what have you come to do again that's why the lord is saying here i'm against those pastors in the land instead of feeding my people instead Instead of gathering my people, they scatter my flock. And then he goes on to tell them what he was going to do, the judgment that was going to come against them. Well, well, not scatter. You might see people at the retreat. You have not seen them for a long time. Maybe then the church, they just happened not to be in your district and you didn't know. Or maybe they've gone away from the church and now they decide they're going to come. Other people have labored. Other people have prayed for them. Other people have suffered. Other people have visited them. Other people have encouraged them. And now the result of the work of other people is now that they come. And then you're seeing them for the first time. And then they think to come out of your mouth is something negative and then you drive them away you will not drive people away i said you will not drive people away i will not drive people away my actions will not drive people away my utterance will not drive people away my impatience will not drive people away 
I can't hear you now. My jokes will not drive people away. And you know, sometimes somebody comes back and then you say, okay, ah, welcome. What you went for? And you've gone to the mountain, you've gone to the valley. Have you got it now? That's like a dagger in their hearts. And then it's okay if it's like that. I've not got it. Okay, I'll go back where I'm coming from. Don't be like that. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. I'm reading from verse 1. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God unto the shepherds, what be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves? Should not the shepherds feed the flock? What be to the shepherds? They're only interested in themselves and they're feeding themselves. Here is my opportunity. Here is my ministry in the church. Here is my chance in the church. Here is what I'm going to protect in the church. And if any other person comes, uh, you know, from the church and is going to be of a helping hand, uh -uh. this is my area. That's what the Lord is saying. And then we push people off. Okay, the church has got to its uh, limit, has got to its ceiling, and they don't need anybody to help in any area anymore. That's not sanctification. Look at verse 5. They were scattered because there is no shepherd. They were scattered because there's nobody to show love. They were scattered because there's nobody to bring them in. They were scattered because there was no shepherd to encourage them. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field where when they were scattered. We're looking at Exodus chapter 32 exodus chapter 32 and i'm reading here from verse 1 exodus chapter 32 we're looking at it from verse 1 here he tells us in verse 1 when the people saw that moses delayed to come down out of the mount the people gathered themselves together unto aaron and said unto him up oh, because gods which shall go before us for as for this moses the man that brought us up out of the land of egypt we know not well what not what has become of him what should they do we don't know what has become of moses he led them out of egypt he made the angel of death to pass over all their houses he delivered them from the bondage of pharaoh and he got them through the red sea and they have been eating manna every day since then let's even think something that happened to moses what should we do we should be praying what should we do we should find out what should we do we should follow up on him as for what as for this moses that brought us out of the land of egypt we know not well what not what has become of him and aaron said aaron 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 said his senior brother aaron said the high priest aaron said the one that was be to be watching over the people in the absence of moses aaron said unto them break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives and of your sons and of your daughters and bring them unto me that's leading people of the people of god astray that is scattering the sheep of the lord away from the kingdom and all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto aaron and he received them at their hand and fashioned each with a graving tool after he had made each a molten calf and they said these be thy gods o israel can you think about that these be thy gods little g o israel which brought thee up out of the land of egypt and when aaron saw it he built an altar before it and aaron made proclamation 
and say tomorrow is a feast unto the Lord capital L O R D unto the Lord and then this be thy God there is now a kind of syncretism imagine the worship of the true God with the false gods and they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings and the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play and the lord said unto moses go get thee down for thy people they no more my people they're scattered they're driven away from the truth they're driven away from the lord they're driven away from true worship you see there are people like aaron they don't have any backbone they don't have any conscience they don't have any proper perspective in the worship of the lord and they drive people away from the truth and the lord said go get thee down for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of egypt have corrupted themselves there are people that do that they allow the people to be corrupted and they corrupt them and they are not going to stand on the truth that saves on the truth that sanctifies on the truth that keeps us holy they have turned aside quickly out of the way which i commanded them they have made them a molten calf and i worshiped it and they have sacrificed thereunto and said this be thy gods o israel which have brought thee up out of the land of egypt and the lord said unto moses i have seen this people and behold is a stiff necked people now therefore let me alone that my rod may wax hot against them that i may consume them and i will make thee of thee a great nation look at verse 33 verse 33 and the lord said unto moses also ever have sinned against me him will i blot out of my books aaron caused all those millions of israelites to be blotted out of the book of life he also he was blotted out until moses began to intercede look at deuteronomy chapter 9 deuteronomy chapter 9 the fatal scattering of souls from the kingdom in deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 16 it says in verse 16 and i looked and behold ye had sinned against the lord your god and have made you a molten cow the whole nation the whole nation they sinned against the lord because an aaron there could not keep the standard and Aaron there could not confront them. And Aaron there could not stand his ground. And Aaron there did not have a backbone. Ye are turned aside quickly out of the way which the Lord had commanded you. Look at verse 18. And I fell down before the Lord as at the first 40 days and 40 nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water because i did neither eat bread nor drink water 40 days 40 nights because 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 of all your sins which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the lord to provoke him to anger for i was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure of the lord where we is the lord was wrought against you to destroy you but the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. If you're going to gather with the Lord and going to gather for the Lord, you might even have to fast and pray. And you might have to come into the very middle of the situation and turn for the people and preach to the people and plead with the people and bring the people back totally, completely unto the Lord. Look at verse 20. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron. The Lord was very angry with Aaron, the one that uh, supported and encouraged their going away from the Lord, scattering the sheep from the kingdom, fatal, deadly, terrible, 
painful and attracted the punishment from God. The Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. I pray we will not scatter the flock of God. You will not scatter the flock of God. The souls will be precious to you. The price that Jesus paid for them to be saved will be precious unto you. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 20. Acts chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 28. Acts chapter 20. We're looking at verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he has purchased with his own blood on a standard price the price of the redemption of the people of God he purchased them he purchased us with his precious blood it says in verse 29 for I know this that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you not sparing the flock scattering the flock not sparing the flock also of your own selves shall men arise of your own selves preachers of your own selves workers of your own selves leaders also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away tell me talk now to draw away disciples after them see there are people they're not interested in the lord having those converts having those disciples they're not interested in the shepherd having uh, all the sheep they want to have the fruit unto themselves like we're told in Osea chapter 10 they want to have the converts unto themselves and i pray that nobody will win you over to themselves in jesus name galatians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 17 galatians chapter 4 verse 17 they zealously affect you but not well those who scatter they zealously affect you but not well those who dry people away they zealously affect you but not well their consecration their loyalty is to scatter and all the strength all the energy they should have employed in gathering together with Christ the employee that is scattering away from Christ it says they zealously affect you but not well yea they will exclude you that she might affect them they would exclude you I will not be excluded I'm coming back to Luke chapter 11 luke chapter 11 i'm reading from verse 23 luke chapter 11 from verse 23 he that is not with me is against me he that is not with me christ is against me christ and he that is not with my servant that i said is against my servant that I said, he that is not with the pastor is against the pastor. He that is not with the gatherer is against the gatherer. He that is not with the one that is preserving and conserving and protecting is against the preservation and the ingathering of the souls into the kingdom. He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth. I will not scatter. I will gather. Say it aloud. I will gather. Will gather with the Lord in Jesus' name. Point number three now. The final gathering, the future gathering of saints to the King of Kings. The future gathering, the final gathering of saints to the King of Kings. We're looking at Genesis chapter 49. Genesis chapter 49. I'm reading from verse 10. Genesis 49. 
Verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. That's talking about Christ. And prophetically, Jacob knew that Christ was coming. And he said, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. We're looking at Psalm 72. Psalm 72, I'm reading from verse 8. Psalm 72, reading from verse 8. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea. Amen. And from the river unto the ends of the earth. They shall dwell, they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemy shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish, and the isles that shall bring presents, the kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him, they will gather unto him. Isaiah chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 2, Isaiah chapter 2, and we're looking at verse 2, talking about Christ, unto him shall the gathering of the people be, and as we come to serve the Lord, as we come to this retreat, we want to initiate these people coming to the Lord, getting saved, and then follow them up, getting sanctified, and follow up on them, and getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, follow up on them, integrate them with the church, follow up on them when they face persecution, we're there to help them stand until the final day when they'll be gathered together with the saints of God up on high in Jesus' name. I say chapter 2 verse 2. I say chapter 2 verse 2. And it shall come to pass in the last days that the mountains of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills. Look at this. Look at this. And all nations shall flow unto it. All nations shall flow unto it. Ezekiel chapter 21. In Ezekiel chapter 21, reading from verse 27. Ezekiel 21, reading from verse 27. It says over here, I will overturn, overturn, overturn it. And it shall be no more until he come, whose right it is, and I will give it unto him. There's going to be an overturning during the great revolution, three and a half years, overturn, overturn, overturn. And then Christ will come. And when he comes, the Father will then make the gathering of the people be unto him. Zechariah chapter 8. In Zechariah chapter 8, we're reading from verse 20. Zechariah chapter 8, reading from verse 20. Thus says the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people, there shall come people, there shall come people, and inhabitants of many cities, and inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, let us go speedily to pray before the Lord and to seek the Lord of hosts. I will go also. As we are bringing other people, you are not just sending them ahead. Go, you say, I will go also. Verse 22, yea, many people and many strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Verse 23, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men shall lay hold out of all languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, saying, we will go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. 
we will go with you they will come readily with you i said they will come readily with you you will turn many to righteousness daniel chapter 12 reading from verse 2 daniel chapter 12 verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life and some to everlasting shame and everlasting contempt and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament anybody there I said anybody there this will be you in Jesus name they that be wise are you wise or foolish I said are you wise or foolish they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness are the stars forever and ever that's what he expects us to do to turn people away from their sin away from darkness away from idols away from occultism away from satan and turn them unto christ turn them unto the savior turn them unto the shepherd and the bishop of their souls turn them to righteousness we will do it matthew chapter 11 chapter 13 matthew chapter 13 i'm reading from verse 40 matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 40 in matthew chapter 13 verse 40 the word of god assures us on the final day and as therefore the tires are gathered and burnt in the fire so shall it be in the end of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity and shall cast them out into the furnace of fire and there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth i pray you'll not be there but look at verse 43 then shall the righteous shine forth as a son in the kingdom of their father who has ears to hear let him hear i have heard i will obey and not scatter people from the kingdom of god i'll establish them in the kingdom of god luke chapter 13 luke chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able when once the master of the house is risen up and are shut to the door. And ye begin to stand without and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. And he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not where ye are. Then shall ye begin to say, We have eaten and drunk in thy presence. We attended retreat, we attended the meetings, we ate there. We drank there. You see, it's not enough just to come to the retreat. They must be born again. They must be saved. And they must move away. They must move off that, go beyond that, and get sanctified. And have that peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. It's not enough. I attended the retreat. I ate there. I drank there. It says, then shall ye begin to say, we have eaten and drunk in thy presence and thou was taught in our streets but it shall say i tell you i know you not whence ye are depart from me all ye that work iniquity and there shall be weeping a gnashing of cheese when you shall see abraham and isaac and jacob 
and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out I pray you will not be thrust out we are looking at Revelation chapter 21 Revelation chapter 21 I read from verse 1 Revelation chapter 21 reading from verse 1 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for our husband and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying behold the tabernacle of God is with men and he shall dwell with them and they shall be his people and the Lord himself shall be with them and be their God and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes Amen, Amen. and there shall be no more death neither sorrow nor crying neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me right for these words are true and faithful and he said unto me it is done i am alpha and omega the beginning and the end I give, I will give unto him that has a thirst of the water of life freely. He that overcometh, who is that? He that overcometh, is he there today? He that overcometh, where is he? You'll overcome in Jesus' name. Shall inherit how many things? All things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful that's what stop people from overcoming the unbelieving that's what stop them from overcoming the abominable that's what stops them from overcoming and the murderers and the whoremongers and the sorcerers and all idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burn it with fire and brimstone which is the second death verse 27 and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they that are rich in the Lamb's book of life. As we bring people to the retreat, you want to understand they must have the assurance their names are rich in the Lamb's book of life. Chapter 22 of Revelation. Verse 12, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is worth me to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they which do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city for without a dogs and sorcerers and all mongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie i jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches i am the root and the offspring of david and the bright and the morning star and the spirit and the bright say and the spirit and the bright say tell them let them come as they come the lord will save them in jesus name the spirit and the bright say come let him that hear us say come let him let him that is a thirst come and whosoever will let him take the water of life freely. The salvation, free. Sanctification, free. Grace, free. 
liberation free deliverance free the blessings of god free bring them in invite them and let them hear the note of hope whosoever will let him take the blessing of life freely let's rise up and talk to the lord tonight and say lord we've heard your word and we're going to be obedient to your word we're going to gather with christ we're going to gather with christ gathering with christ paul will do his part apollos must also do his part they must work together we must work together why don't you open your mouth and commit your life commit yourself to the lord and say yes lord yes lord yes lord we're going to work together no contradiction no opposition no going the opposite direction faithfully gathering together by the grace of god faithfully gathering together let him hear you pray you're too quiet Tell the Lord, we'll gather together, walk together, cooperate together, serve together, sacrifice together, commit ourselves together to the work of the Lord, faithfully gathering the sheep into the fold of Christ. Other sheep I have which are not of this fold them i must bring you'll use you your hand your mouth i must bring join together with christ with all your heart all your soul and all your mind don't gather fruit unto yourself gather fruit unto Christ he is the savior points the attention of the people the heart of the people unto him a savior he is the one that has the grace the power the strength the enablement to hold onto them and to make them stand make a vow you will not scatter you know be like Aaron that will scatter the people from the kingdom drive them from the kingdom you know be like that a pastor I spoke about a drove the person God used me to bring to the Lord my school days was such a negative word run away prodigal you'll come again tell the Lord your attitude your life your work your commitment your sacrifice will make people want to stay not to drive people away and then for the people of god through the grace that is given unto us standing living right until that final gathering of the saints to the king of kings commit yourself i'll be there and all these converts the Lord is bringing through the church, they'll be there too on that final gathering day. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be.